Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. When we look at the night sky, we immediately recognize that some stars appear brighter than others. This was characterized long ago by the Greek astronomer Hipparchus, who constructed an apparent magnitude catalog of 850 stars. To the brightest stars, he gave a magnitude of 1, and to the faintest, his eye can detect a magnitude of 6. Today, the apparent magnitude scale extends from about minus 27 to plus 30 or plus 31. Each change by one unit of apparent magnitude represents a change in brightness by a factor of 2.512. Or you can think in terms of a change of five units as a change in brightness by a factor of exactly 100. A star with an apparent magnitude of 6 is 100 times less bright to our eyes than a star with an apparent magnitude of 1. Here is a scale of several objects listed in terms of their apparent magnitude. The brightest object in the sky is clearly the sun and it has an apparent magnitude of minus 26.83. The faintest stars detectable with the naked eye have a magnitude of about 6.5, whereas the faintest objects detectable with our current telescope have a magnitude of about plus 30 or plus 31. The full moon has an apparent magnitude of minus 12.74. The planets have an apparent magnitude which varies according to their position relative to the Earth. For instance, Mercury has a calculated apparent magnitude between minus 2.48 and plus 7.25. When Jupiter is four astronomical units away, that is four times the distance from the Sun to the Earth away, it has an apparent magnitude of minus 2.7. For planets, astronomers are concerned often with maximal apparent magnitude or brightness. The star Vega is said to have an apparent magnitude of zero, and it usually sets the standard for measuring apparent stellar magnitude, although other systems exist. Here are the apparent magnitudes of several other important stars. Sirius A is the brightest star in the celestial sphere, and it has an apparent magnitude of minus 1.4 in the optical range. Note that now I am speaking about brightness in the optical range. That is because apparent magnitudes are usually computed by integrating the light of the star over the visible range of the electromagnetic spectrum, not over the entire spectrum. Sirius B, for instance, is a white dwarf which usually is considered very dim, having a magnitude of only 8.44 as you can see here. However, Sirius B is an extremely strong emitter in the X-ray range, whereas Sirius A is a rather dim in that frequency range. As a result, when we think of apparent magnitude, remember that we are only considering what the star looks like in the optical range. We are not integrating over the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Otherwise, Sirius B would have a much higher apparent magnitude. This will become important later when we examine the luminosity of stars in the context of the standard gaseous model of the Sun. In the end, apparent magnitudes are not that practical for doing astrophysics because we care more about how the star looks like relative to another than relative to an observer on Earth. As such, astronomers have adopted an absolute magnitude scale which is based on the same idea but which takes into account distance effects. That scale rates the stars according to the magnitude they would have if positioned at 10 parseconds from the Sun, namely 32.6 light years or 19 trillion miles away. When one plots the same known stars in terms of absolute magnitude, everything changes. For instance, the Sun has an absolute magnitude of only 4.83. In terms of absolute magnitude, the stars range from values of minus 10 to about plus 17. All of this becomes important later as we discuss the stars and present the HR diagram. Well that is all for now. Next we will cover luminosity and color temperature of the stars. If you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, mention the video to your local astronomy club, support me with a like, and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below and I'll see you soon on our next video.